Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80s Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, we will be continuing with the series, the top 80 slashers of the 80s. And we will be looking at numbers 70 through 61. Now, in the, the last video in this series, where we, uh, we counted down numbers 80 to 71, those films, even though there were, you know, uh, a few surprises that, um, you know, judging from the comments, many of you thought uh, probably should have made it higher. Um, so yeah, regardless of that, all all ten of those films were ones that 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 I did like. I liked all of those films. They were just some that, uh, you know, just had a, a few problems um, with them, and you know, in my opinion, that just kind of prevented them from ranking any higher. The 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 ten following films that we're about to discuss, uh, once again, are all ones that I enjoy quite a bit. Um, I, I like all of these films, and they again they either have some minor problems, um, or you know they they just they just simply can't measure up to some of the you know the better films within the genre. Um, so that's why they're, you know, within the, in the sixties range here, 70 through 61. Um, but yeah, I, I like almost all these films. So, you know, I, 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 I'll probably have a few negative things to say about some of these, but for the most part, um, they're, like I said, they're all ones I, I really enjoy and they're all fun films at this point. Yeah. So, all right. With, with all that being said, um, you know, I should obviously, obviously say these are, you know, my own personal rankings. Um, you know, there's no definitive list of the best 80s slashers or whatnot. Um, you know, so these, these rankings are based off, you know, my own personal likes, tastes, preferences, uh, within the genre. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get into it and start off by taking a look at number 70. Alright, so coming at number 70, uh, from 1981, we have Don't Go in the Woods, or Don't Go in the Woods Alone. Uh, now, this, <laughs> this is one of those films that it's, it's so bad it's good. It's one of those films. Um, you know, no one's gonna argue that this is a well-made film or like a good film. Uh, it, it quite possibly be, be made one of the, the worst made, uh, films in, within the genre. You know, there, there's a few contenders to be sure, but th this is in the, you know, in, in that category. Um, but you know, like, um, in, in the last list, we, we talked about at number 80, uh, the nail gun massacre came in at number 80. And like, like that, this film is just, this is just a really fun slasher to watch. Uh, you know, the acting is beyond terrible in this film. The dialogue is, is equally terrible. Um, but you know, it's super cheesy and I just, I don't know what it is. I just, I just love it all. It's just one of those films. If you're in the, the, the right, like if you're in the right mood, um, this, this film will definitely, uh, suit you for, for what you're looking for. It's just one of those, just sit back and have a good laugh and be entertained. And it, it is entertaining. I find it entertaining. Um, the kills aren't too bad. Um, you know, considering, I think the, the budget on this film was, was around $150,000. So, you know, considering that they, there was a lot of blood effects and there was, there was, they were pretty good. They're the, the guy. I, I kind of like the kills in this film. You know, at least they tried. Some of these films, they don't even try. They don't have the budget, so they just skip over it or whatnot. Um, at least there was an attempt to make some nice practical effect kills in this film. So yeah, like I said, not not a good film. Not not saying this is a good film, but it's uh, it's one that's certainly a blast to watch. You know, you have some drinks or whatever, whatever your choice of. Um, you know, is to indulge and to enjoy these films and sit back with some friends and just, just have a good laugh. That, that's what this is. So yeah, so coming at number 70, uh, don't go in the woods. All right, let's uh, take a look at number 69. All right, so coming at number 69, we have from 1984, Splatter University. 
Now, again, this is this is another film that's very similar to Don't Go in the Woods, as it's uh, another one of those so bad it's good films for me. Um, you know, the reason why I like, uh, I have Splatter University ranked a little higher than Don't Go in the Woods Alone and The Nailgun Massacre is that this one seems to have like a, a little more going on, if that makes sense. If there's, I felt like there was a real attempt at some decent kill effects, you know, again, for the, for the budget, like there's nothing great about this, but um, I feel like there was a real attempt at it. There was an attempt at creating a decent plot where there's like a twist or reveal that kind of works. Um, like like the, the, there was kind of a script, like I said, an attempt at a doable script within the, within this genre. Um, but the, the thing that really kind of puts us ahead of those other two really, you know, so bad it's good type slashers is the ending of Splatter University. It's, it's something that, um, I won't spoil it, but the ending of this film does something that we, it's, it's unusual for, for the genre. It's, it's not something that is ever usually done, uh, within the genre. And because of that, I liked it. It's kind of a surprising and shocking ending. And it's, it's kind of memorable. It kind of sticks with me. So for that reason alone is why I kind of have it ahead of those two films. They're all within the same class. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, just <laughs> Splatter, you know, I don't, Splatter University is not a, a, a great film, but it kind of has aspirations to be a good slasher, you know? Um, I don't know. Just kind of my thoughts, I guess. So yeah, so come to number 69, Splatter University. All right, let's, uh, let's go on and take a look at number 68. All right, so coming to number 68 from 1987, we have Blood Harvest. Now, this is a film that, um, it kind of surprised me because of, uh, like, it's kind of a recent watch. I reviewed it on the channel. You can find it on the channel. Um, it kind of surprised me just because of how sleazy it was. I, I wasn't, I, I, I didn't know. I wasn't under the impression that this was like a sleazy type of film. Um, but it certainly is. This has a, yeah, a, a really good sleazy vibe to it. And I love, I love the sleaze. I love the sleazy slashers. Um, you know, this isn't like, you know, like, like Maniac or New York Rip. We're not that sort of sleaze, but, um, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things going on here. This, this film doesn't feel like a, a slasher that has like a lot of depth to it. it it's pretty simple. Um, but you know, what it, what it's going for, I, I feel it does pretty well. Um, you know, the plot is pretty basic, basic mystery twist. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a farming slasher. Like it's pretty stationary that the setting, it's just at, at, at like a, like a farmhouse. And like I said, there's not a lot of depth to it. There's not a lot going on. It, it's basic, but it, it, it pulls it off pretty well. And like I said, with, within like the, the the mystery surrounding um this story there is a lot of like sleazy like sexual assault type of scenes and in kills which is it, it stands out like there's there's a lot of nudity in this film like a lot of nudity um it, it's it, it's all like the main actress like the, the final girl she's naked for like 50 percent of the film and and it's and she's in scenes that are like you know getting she's getting drugged and unconscious and people are tying her up and taking advantage of her it's just it's this, some of the scenes are really difficult to watch um yeah and of course this film has tiny tim as an attraction or a draw and he's all right you know he and he provides some extra creepiness because he's kind of a creepy guy um like i said the, the kills are pretty good they're pretty graphic but they're all the same like which is kind of disappointing like it's basically just like throat slits which i love th i love throat slits it's one of my favorite types of kills in these films but uh, there's no variety it's, it's basically all the same um yeah so yeah blood harvest is definitely a solid slasher that just you know it, it has a little sleaze factor to to help it out so yeah number 68 blood harvest all right let's uh take a look at number 67 
All right, so coming at number uh, 67 from 1984, we have Rocktober Blood. Uh, now, this is best described, I guess, as a like a rock and roll slasher. And it's because of that, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's there's this film has many elements that just kind of help it elevate it. Um, yeah, that just help elevate it past. To be honest, it's rather dull and silly plot like the plot is definitely the weakest part of this film um but you're you know you're going into this for the for the extracurricular slasher elements i guess um you know the story is just there to to move it forward it's pretty choppy it's not and i i reviewed this film again as well you can you can find it on the channel um but yeah some of the kills in this are pretty good there's some pretty fun creative kills variety which is which is nice there's a, a good a good amount of nudity um you know to, to keep you entertained in that regard um but you know the, the setting is fantastic it's more of like an atmosphere because you know you're following like a like a 80s glam rock metal rock type of band um you know you see them like in the studio recording songs you see them you know touring you see the groupies backstage you see them doing like interviews with the media and then you get to see like them on on stage doing concerts and you get to see like a bunch of full songs like three or four songs in their entirety and they're good they're fun they're good 80s rock songs uh and you know there, there's at the end there's there's a big concert where you get like these three or four songs and during the concert people are getting killed live on stage and the audience doesn't know they think it's part of the act it's great there, there's there's there, there's a lot of really fun stuff in this film and yeah if you just like say just get past the plot because the plot is kind of just like I said, just there to move the narrative forward, and that that's about all it does. Like, you know, they they put a twist reveal at the end, and it's okay. It's not it's nothing special, but um, but yeah, October Blood has a lot of uh, a lot of fun. All right, let's let's take a look at number sixty six. All right, so. Coming at number 66 from 1988, we have Cheerleader Camp. Now, um, yeah, Cheerleader Camp is your typical late 80s cheese fest. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's super cheesy, but it's it's really fun. Um, you know, again, the, the camp setting is, you know, kind of the star of the show here for me. It's, it's, it's really fun. This is like well, a cheerleader camp, like a camp where a bunch of cheerleaders go and they do competitions, they train, they practice, and they have these cheering competitions, which is just, it's so cheesy, so fun. Like the cheers, they, there's some rapping, which is terribly, oh man, it's, it's, it's terrible, but it, it's so fun to watch. Um, yeah, it's fantastic setting. Uh, there's some, there's some really good kills, some pretty good variety. Um, so, you know, there's that to look forward to. There's some good nudity. Uh, this film actually stars, um, well, first off, it stars, one of the main stars is Betsy Russell, who was like a, you know, an 80s bombshell. Like, you know, she was in all these like private school, tomboy, all these, uh, one of the angel films. She's like one of the, you know, the, the 80s teen sex comedies girls who are always taking her clothes off. And I don't think she takes her clothes off in this film, which is kind of ironic, but she's beautiful. And then it also has Terry Weigel, who went on after this to have a long career in the adult film industry. And if she, she of course, gets uh, has some nude scenes in this film. So, yeah, really attractive women, um, good kills. So it, it's good for that. Um, but, yeah, like, it's just some of, like, the, the stuff in this film is, like, so cringeworthy like the clothing that they wear that their hairstyles like the, the the dialogue the way they talk to each other it's just it's so cheesy um but it just makes it really charming at this point to watch nowadays it's just it's super fun um and again the 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 twist at the end of this film is actually pretty good um you know because of some of like the subplots that they set up throughout the film um, that plays out with one of the characters uh it the, the way the film ends is kind of again like similar to splatter university it's kind of it's kind of unique and memorable it's um i yeah i i like it when it happens i think that um dorm that drip blood and maybe the initiation or two other ones that kind of end like this if you know if you know what those films the ending of those films uh th this one is is along the same lines and i like that when they when they do something a little different so um yeah cheerleader camp's a good one so it, it's it's super fun so yeah that was number 66 all right, let's uh, take a look at number 65. 
All right, so coming at number 65 from 1982, we have Girls Night Out. Um, now, this is a, this is, uh, this is kind of like an underrated, little known early 80s slasher that, that doesn't really, doesn't really get talked about too much. Uh, you know, it's never gotten a Blu-ray release. It's actually getting a Blu-ray release, which... You know, I'll talk about that in another video, which is good. But yeah, up to this point, it, it hasn't had a Blu-ray release. It just doesn't get a lot of love. And, um, you know, it's probably because this isn't a film that really does anything fantastic that makes it stand out from the crowd, you know? It's it's your, it's your run-of-the-mill early 80s slasher. But, you know, it does all the little things kind of right just to make it a, like a solid slasher. Uh, you know, it has a, has a really good college campus setting which is really fun um there's a little bit of like uh animal house style going on people having a good time drinking partying frat houses all that stuff um so that's going on but then there's also like the 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 theme of the of the story is like a scavenger hunt is going on and all these groups of kids or young adults university students college students are like out you know on a scavenger hunt and there's a killer on the loose and killing people so that's kind of the the setup um, and it's, it's, you know, it's kind of unique and fun within the genre. I like, I like the scavenger hunt. It's, you know, it, it's a good way to get people in different, um, different locations across the campus. Like I think they go to like a graveyard at one point and like in the basement. So like they, they can put them wherever they want because they're, you know, hunting for clues and they, it's a good way to get people alone. So it, it's fun. It works really well. Um, and now again, this is kind of a theme I think in this list, but, um, the ending to this film uh, is great the 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 twist reveal is actually creepy i found this one really kind of you know sometimes these twists they they have like an edge to them that um it's just kind of off-putting and creepy and this one like kind of made my hair on my arm stand up a little bit it was that kind of creepy vibe to it and it ends on like a like a freeze frame and like as the credits roll you're staring at this last image and again it's it's unsettling and very memorable i just the, the ending of this film just has always stuck with me uh, so I, I feel like they they really they really nailed it with this one. So yeah, Girls Night Out is just like I said a, a solid, enjoyable early '80s slasher. You know it doesn't do anything fantastic, but it's it's good. It's definitely check it out. And you know when the Blu-ray comes out, that's uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a good a good one to pick up. All right, let's uh, let's move on and take a look at number sixty-four. All right, so kind of number 64 from 1984, we have Silent Madness. Now, this um, this is one of two films um, that are considered 3D 80s slashers, um, along with, you know, Friday the 13th Part 3. And I, I for that reason, I, I love this film because of that. Um, you know, I own the Blu-ray. And, you know, my, my last rewatch was, was in 3D from the Blu-ray and it, it was so much fun. I had such a good time, such a good experience. Um, it, it, it's great, you know, um, but besides the 3D, like this, this film has everything you expect from it, from like a, a like a mid eighties, uh, slasher, you know, it has a decent college setting. Like there's definitely better college settings out here, but you, you get the feeling that you are at a college campus, which is fun. I like that setting. There's some really good creative kills. Um, they're unique. Like there's lots of different variety in some of the kills. And like I said, some of them are, you know, filmed regularly and just, you know, but some of these kills that were filmed specifically for 3d. So when you watch it in 3d, it, they, they're great. They're, they're fantastic. Um, there's, you know, it, it has the, you know, the mandatory nudity that that's in it um the killer's all right he's probably the weakest part i would say of this film uh, not the greatest but like i said the the 3d effects are great this is um again it, like it's based on the the vinegar syndrome blu-ray that i have but um it, it it's why it's is without the 3d it would probably be a lower on this um but it, it's still like a really good it's I, I, it's similar to girls night out um, it, like a, a solid slash. It does everything just really well. Um, nothing great, but just everything is solid. But, you know, you add in the 3D and some of the kills are fantastic. And some of the nudity is fantastic. There's like, they, they really use the 3D really well. And it, it's just, it's really fun to watch. So yeah, I, I really like Silent Madness. I thought it was, I think, I think it's a good film. 
All right, let's move on to number 63. All right, so coming at number 63 from 1988, we have Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. Now, this is definitely going to be a surprise for some. Um, I'm sure I'm going to hear about this in the comments um, as to why I have this film so low, but this is without a doubt my least favorite of the Friday the 13th films um, from the 80s. Um, it's not even close. Um, I I have a lot of problems with this film. I I I I can't hate the film um, because it's you know it's still a Friday the Thirteenth film and it's better than a lot of you know the other eighty slashers. Um, you know, almost forty other ones on my that that I've seen so far. Um, but in in comparison to the other Friday the Thirteenth films, I, I I consider this bad. Um, in comparison to other 80s slashers that are that are worse, it, it, it like I said, I, it's not a bad film. I, I I like it. I just as a Friday the 13th film, I, I don't like it. I guess um, it's just there's a lot of problems with the plot. Like it, I, I don't like the ending with like the whole father reveal. It just it doesn't make sense, and it kind of takes me right out of it, and kind of ruins the whole experience for me. I won't get into much of that, but that that's kind of really has always bugged me. Um, I don't like the whole Carrie versus Jason angle. It's just, I don't know. It was unnecessary, you know? This is like the, the second film in the franchise where Jason goes supernatural. And they, you know, they really upped the <laughs> upped the supernatural with the whole Carrie thing. It's not really explained well. It's just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I have a, pro a lot of problems with this film you know i want to like it more i know some people love this film you know I, maybe it's when you grew up or if it one of the first ones you watched people this is one of the people's favorites in the franchise which i you know i wish i wish i liked it more but um yeah i just i don't know i don't really like this one um I, I, again in comparison to the other friday films it's, it's a good film it's well made kane hodder um, you know, this is his first appearance as Jason. He's great. Um, the stunt work is great. There, there's a lot of good stuff in this film. I just, I just can't rank it any higher just cause it's just, there, there's a lot of problems that, that, that bother me. All right, let's, let's move on and, uh, let's look at number 62. All right, so coming at number 62 from 1981, we have Hell Knight. Uh, now, this I'll be honest, this, this is one I, I, I probably owe another rewatch. Um, it's been a while since I've seen this, but um, again, I, I don't think this is a bad film. This is just one that I think I had really high expectations for going into it, and... I don't know. I was just disappointed. It just left me kind of disappointed with this film. I don't know if it was Linda Blair. I was, I was, you know, she's a big name in horror. And I was expecting more. I don't know what it was. Um, but this film just kind of has a, it kind of is a weird vibe for me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the, it kind of has like, like the atmosphere is really like gothic. It takes place in this, like this old timey gothic like mansion like castle setting kind of thing um and then there's like a ghost story kind of theme running throughout it which is which is weird um i don't know it just this film just feels different from most 80s slashers and i, I think it's just something that just doesn't really resonate with me um linda blair to be honest she was nothing special in this she's i didn't yeah you know um I don't know. This I was just I just felt kind of disappointed with this. Um, it was like it was fine. It, it definitely had some good moments. The ending was actually really good. I, I liked the ending of this film. Once the you know once the, the climax was happening and the and the stakes and the tension got raised, uh, yeah, it, it, it had its moments. And like I said, it's not a bad film. It's just a little disappointing, and uh, it just kind of has a weird vibe. I'm not the most. I don't know. I, I don't usually like the supernatural slashers that much, and this one kind of played into that a little bit. Um, I don't know. Something about it just didn't grab me. So, uh, but again, not 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 a bad film. Still enjoyable. I I definitely need to go back and and rewatch this one. All right, let's wrap this video up and take a look at number sixty one. All 
All right, so counter number 61 from 1982, we have Alone in the Dark. Now, um, this is one of those films that is, I, I consider it's a great horror film, uh, but it, it's not so great of a slasher. Um, you know, it, it, it definitely does have some really good, you know, slasher moments, but it feels, again, it, it has a different feel to it. It feels more like a, like a serious, like adult slasher. You know, not 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 one of not one of the like one of the mill made for teenagers going to the theater to watch. You know, you know with with a bunch of friends. Um, you know, like the, you know the formula that we're all used to, like that most of these films are. This doesn't have that. This is this is different. This is more of an a, adult horror, and it's good. Um, it's just I just think that's probably why it's it's lower on this list of slasher films. You know, if this was like an eighties horror list, this would probably be way up higher because it's it is a really good film. Um, the cast, this has probably the strongest cast of any 80s slasher that exists. You know, you have Martin Landau, Jack Palance, Donald Pleasance, Dwight Schultz from the A-Team. Um, and they're all really good. Um, yeah, just fantastic acting. The script is good. Good story. Um, th there's nothing, I don't have anything negative to say about this film. It's, it's really good. It has a creepy atmosphere at times. There's some really good kills. Some, it has, you know, the nudity that, that, that's required. It has a little bit of everything. It's just, like I said, it just feels, um, different within the genre. It feels more of a horror film than a slasher film, even though it is, it's clearly a slasher film. So it's just, um, I don't know. It just kind of, has a weird spot in in this list of slasher rankings so yeah that that's it that's it everyone that's where that's where we're gonna end this video at number 61 so uh yeah let me know what you guys think i'm sure there's gonna be a few picks in here that some people have uh <laughs> some opinions on which is always it's always nice to hear and read that and uh, have some conversations in the comments there below uh, and yeah, stay tuned. Next, next one up on, on this, uh, this list obviously will be number 60 to 51. So, you know, in, in my opinion that, you know, the films are just going to get better and better and, uh, will be more positive, you know, but there definitely be some controversial picks I'm sure coming up as, uh, anyone who watches the channel probably knows my, uh, my tendencies within these films. All right, everybody. That's it. So, uh, yeah. So thanks for watching and yeah, until next time. All right. See ya.